today on Running to Him. The Church of God should not be divided. Instead, we must look to God's Word and the teaching of the Church Fathers through the Holy Spirit's lens to restore unity. And this is a devotion for 321. Today we will read 1 Corinthians chapters 1 and 2 and concentrate on chapter 1, verses 10 through 13. 1 Corinthians 1, 10 through 13 says, Now I exhort you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all agree, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you may be made complete in the same mind and in the same judgment. For I have been informed concerning you, my brethren, by Chloe's people, that there are quarrels among you. Now I mean this, that each one of you is saying, I am of Paul, and I of Apollos, and I am of Cephas, and I am of Christ. Has Christ been divided? Paul was not crucified for you, was he? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? From almost the beginning of the church, some have wished to divide the church through the teaching of the false doctrine or to satisfy their own egos. It took about a thousand years for the first significant split to occur, with the Roman Catholic Church splitting from the Eastern Orthodox Church in Constantinople. Five hundred years later, the Reformation took place, and Protestantism began. King Henry VIII separated the Anglican Church from the Roman Catholics over his marital issues. Over at Swingley, and Martin Luther disliked each other so much that Luther praised Swingley's death in battle. Baptists, Methodists, Presbyterians, and many others have claimed to have the truth, and they divided Christianity into self-indulgent groups, unwilling to recognize that they are doing Satan's bidding. Today, the splits are happening with alarming speed. Today's battleground is not theology, but an argument over mankind's nature. The Church of England has officially recognized the so-called fluidity of human sexuality and is permitting same-sex marriages to be celebrated. Unfortunately, many mainline churches are succumbing to the exact same attitude of celebrating sexual deviance and sin. Calvin Robinson was a seminary student in the Church of England who spoke out against the current situation and was then removed from his ordination. See his debate speech here. So what does Paul mean when he writes that there shouldn't be factions in the church? Are we all to join the World Council of Churches and sink to the lowest common denominator so that we are nothing close to what scriptures and tradition teach about what we are to believe? Or are we to fight for what is right and join in the harmony and the peace for which Christ paid in John 17, 21? Paul is not suggesting that we change the scriptures or tradition to satisfy everyone. That would result in heresy. Paul is saying that we review our theology in light of the scripture and in the early church writings we must discard preconceived notions and respond to the Holy Spirit as he guides us. Our actions will change our lives and our walk with Christ somehow. Through the study and prayer, we can return to the early church's teaching and worship. Thank you for listening. We pray that today's devotion was meaningful to you. We would love to hear from you. You can use either Facebook or YouTube to like, subscribe, share, and tell others about us. If you would like to contact us, you can reach me at PhineasJacobus at runningtohim.net.